Ladies and gentlemen, meet the better half. Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen. May I interject a question here? Just one. Who is the better half, the husband or the wife? Well, let's not argue. Let's find out as we get underway with another stormy session of the better half. The comedy quiz that spotlights the home life of Mr. and Mrs. America. Married couples are up here tonight to match their wits in a battle of brains, brawn, and beauty for the title of the better half of the family. And here's the little man who knows all, sees all, and says, Valenti, Tiny Ruffner! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack Berry. Well, Jack, who was our first couple tonight to toe the mark in the better half race for top honors here? On their toes and waiting for the word go, Tiny, are Mr. and Mrs. Ehrlich of, uh, of, uh, Brooklyn, New York. No, you don't tell me. Good old Brooklyn. Well, welcome to the family fireside side here, folks. How are you feeling, Mr. and Mrs. Ehrlich? Fine. And you, Mr. Ehrlich, how are you feeling? A little shaky. A little shaky. A little nervous, huh? Don't forget now to talk right into that microphone. How long have you folks been married? Nine, nine, ten months. Ten, ten months. Ten months? Yes. Ten months. How many children have you? <laughs> none. What? Well, wonderful. None, I, I said. Oh, none? Oh, well, that's an oversight. I'm sure no doubt will be remedied <laughs> later on. Just freshmen, eh? Okay. Now, before we start the fur flying here, let me see first uh, how I can set you straight as the cards stack up for this better half business. We're going to give you a series of tests with cash awards for each, and the one winding up with the more money at the end is without doubt the better half of the family. Does that sound fair to you, Mr. Ellie? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, he didn't answer. You are the better half at this <laughs> juncture. There's no question. Okay, suppose you put your brains to work first. Here's an easy question to start you off for $2. Both of you go after it. First one to answer it correctly is the winner. Think of a popular old song now and tell me, what would you be doing while I hitched old Dobbin to the shade? Uh, no help from the audience, please. Da 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 dee da 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 No, no, la da dee da 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 Riding in a carriage? No, it would be bonnet. You'd be putting on your... Bonnet. That's right, you'd be putting on your old gray bonnet with the blue ribbons on it. That's correct. It's early gets the two down. Nice going, little lady. And now for three dollars, and this one is not so easy. It's a two-syllable word we're looking for this time. Let's see who can figure it out first. The first syllable is a vehicle. New York's full of them. The second is a preposition. The whole word is a part of a ship. What is the word? Remember that the first syllable is a vehicle. New York is full of them. They're usually painted yellow or orange. What is that? Bus. No, 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 no. Now, you're, you're not a bus, but you're close. You're close. It's a means of transportation. It's a vehicle. It's got four wheels. It's yellow. Sometimes it has checkers on it. Fellows with little caps a on chabby, it. Chabby, chabby. A cab. Now, part? what's the second syllable? It's a preposition. It's a part of a ship. The whole word. A preposition. Cabin. What cabin, cabin is correct, Mr. Ehrlich? Nice going, and that gets you $3. Nice going. There. Now, let's, uh, let's turn our attention this time to geography for this quiz. Four parts to the question, each worth a dollar. I want you to tell me what color is associated with the following. For instance, if I should happen to say mountains, you could answer green, white, blue ridge, green mountains, white mountains, or so forth. You got the idea? All right, here we go. What color is suggested by a C, S-E-A? Blue. Green. No, that isn't incorrect. Neither of those are right. There's no blue sea, there is no green sea, but there are other colors. Red sea. Red sea is correct. That gets you a dollar. Now, what, what color is suggested by a famous English cliff? White. That's White. right. What Dover. cliffs are they? White Dover. cliffs, Dover. That is correct. That's right. Now, what color is suggested by a natural park? Yellowstone. Absolutely. Yellow is the word. Get you another She's dollar. She's all right. She's all right. She's been around, hasn't she? All right. Now, here's another one. What color is suggested by a city... In New Jersey, it's the one word that you cannot rhyme. I don't care how hard you try. It's a city in New Jersey. There's an east, there's a west. Orange. That is correct. <laughs> Mr. Early can get you another dollar. Okay, now five dollars at stake this time, and we'll deal with rivers. There are ten large rivers in the United States that bear the names of states. Let's see who can get three of them first. Five dollars at stake now. Ohio. One. Mississippi. That's Mississippi. That's one apiece. Go right ahead. Now, I need three from one of you. What is the, the Mississippi? What, what comes away from the Mississippi? What makes it the uh, longest river in the world? Stretches way up into Canada. 
Uh, don't Lawrence. no help from the audience. What? St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence is not in the United States. I'm sorry, it's on the border. These are within oh. the United States precisely. Let us go on. We have one apiece. You've overlooked a lot of... No. What? Missouri? That is correct. That's two for you, Mrs. Ehrlich. They're Nebraska, from... Omaha, Wyoming. Now, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> now, you're guessing now. The, uh, a, uh, one of them makes a very famous canyon. Makes a very famous canyon. What river is that? It's in the state of Arizona. Makes a very famous canyon. Colorado. Can... Colorado is correct. And Mrs. Ehrlich wins, and that gets you $5, Mrs. Ehrlich. Now, let's take a look at how you folks made out in the metal department. We find that Mrs. Ehrlich has a grand total of $9, while her husband has but 5 So, Mr. Ehrlich, uh, you are trailing at the moment. But for your last test, we're going to put $10 at stake, and we will be able to decide the issue. Do you recall everything you did uh, for the past nine months, let us say, ten months? Practically everything, you think? That's not I too... I suppose so. Well, I think you too. Suppose you both go off stage to a nice quiet room with Jack Berry and see how much you can actually remember. And we'll bring you back here in just a moment. And by that time, we will, we will be able to ask you some questions <laughs> during those nine months, which will uh, display very cleanly how much you have remembered in those past nine months. Now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight... We want to try something. We want to see whether a husband or a wife will give the more logical answers when they don't know what the heck they're talking about. For instance, we're going to take the subject of eating, and I'm going to put some questions to the two of them about eating. And the one who gives us the more logical answers will win ten more dollars. But so that they don't know what we're talking about, we're going to twist that word right back around and call it tay, T-A-E. T -A -E. See? And I'm going to call, every time I should be saying eat, I'll be saying tay. All right, Ed, signal Jack to bring him back in again, and we'll get into this thing here, and we'll see how logical the Ehrlichs are, whether it's the missus or the mister who makes the best sense here. <laughs> right up to our microphone now, Mrs. Ehrlich and Mr. Ehrlich. Uh, do you think you recall most of the things you did for the past... <laughs> yeah? Yep. Yeah. You do. Well, that's good. Fine. Now, I'd like to ask you some questions, if you don't mind. These questions may sound silly. I can't explain them, but you just give logical answers to something that you don't understand if you can. You simply answer the best you can. Whether you're right or wrong, you'll find out later. Mr. Ehrlich, suppose we start with you. When did you tail last? When did I what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I said... <laughs> I, I said I, I said I can't explain. I simply want to know when. When did you tell us? Take a guess and see if you don't know. About a year ago. About a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> Remarkable fellow. Holds his physique well, too. You wouldn't think it. Now, Mrs. Ehrlich, uh, when did you tell us? Um, let me see. Yeah, when did you tell us? Never. Never? <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Well, neither of you came very close that time, but Mr. Ehrlich has a slight edge. At least he does taste sometimes. <laughs> let's, see, uh, let's see how your answer ties in this time, Mrs. Ehrlich. If you did tay, what would you use? Oh, well, if my husband tayed a year ago... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what would he use? A uh, fish pole. A fishing pole. <laughs> very novel. Very novel, particularly if you were a fish. Very novel. Well, all right. Now, let's see about Mr. Ehrlich. It's quite possible... You could do that, but I've never seen it done. Mr. Ehrlich, uh, what would you use to tay with? A rake and a shovel. A rake and a shovel. <laughs> Not exactly good manners. Not precisely. Well, once again, we've got to admit you're doing better than your wife here, believe it or not. Now, just one more question, Mr. Ehrlich, and I'll tell you this much. You actually do tay. You have to. Everybody does. Now, bearing that in mind, tell me the last time you tayed at home. Did you do it in the cellar, the attic, the bathtub, the sink... Or the dining room? Uh, I did it in the, um, bathroom. You did it in the bathroom? We had soup from the bowl in the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know. Never heard of... Maybe an Indian found a spring in there and you, you sampled the same spring. I don't know. <laughs> Most peculiar woman. Uh, tell me, Mr. Mr. Ehrlich, where do you usually tay at home? Uh, in the dining room. Wonderful! Absolutely correct! Wonderful! Now, now I'll explain.
explain these shenanigans to you, folks. The word Tay, when you turn it around, is eat. Oh. Is eat. You gave us the more logical answer, Mr. Ehrlich. The $10 go to you, and uh, here's Mr. Barry to give us the final score in the Ehrlich family. Well, whether it's Tay or eat, it looks like Mr. Ehrlich has come out ahead because Mrs. Ehrlich wound up with $9, and her husband wound up with 15 So, gentlemen, who's the better half of the Ehrlich family? Her husband. Congratulations, sir. The better half honors of the family go to you, and along with it, this grand prize, a beautiful 17-jewel, world-famous Boulevard Flight Commander. Oh, <laughs> and may the rest of your married life sparkle as brightly as that brand new, beautiful Boulevard you have just won. And Mrs. Ehrlich, well, I guess you know what's coming to you. A little seat in our second radio's row where you can observe the rest of our show in chagrin silence. And now, Jack, is our next couple all set to brave the wrath of the better half? Sure thing. Up here to battle it out for the front place on their domestic scene are Mr. and Mrs. Camp of Astoria, Long Island. I never heard of a better location. <laughs> now, try not to answer at the same time both uh, right now, Mr. and Mrs. Camp, but which of you is without a doubt the better half of your family? Into the I mic. am. You, oh, I see. That's good. I always like to have people both convinced that they're the better half because somebody always quite gets surprised and really turns out to be that. Now let's go to work and see who walks off with the honors. Both of you say a right into these questions. Remember the payoff is for speedy replies. This fight you off with two dollars and an easy question that goes like this. What famous group of men in fiction had for their slogan these words? One for all and all for one. Uh, D'Artagnan, the Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers is correct. Who said it first? You said it for George Washington was three men. I knew he threw a dollar across the river, but I never heard of him dividing himself like an amoeba. Okay, that gets you uh, 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 the first uh, two dollar payoff here. Now here's one for three dollars. Uh, let's see which of you can do the better with this. I want you to tell me what animals are associated with the following. One dollar for each animal. The movie Dracula brings to mind what creature or animal? The movie Dracula. A bat. Absolutely correct, Mr. Camp. That gets you another dollar. Now, the stage success Harvey brings to mind what particular... A rabbit. That is correct. Another dollar. How about the opera Carmen? What animal does that bring to mind? A bull. A bull is correct. A man's just awful good, folks. Congratulations, Mr. Camp. I've got one here now that'll stop from Mrs. Camp. Don't you worry. Now, you get in and get the $4 this time. What city and state are mentioned in this sentence? And this is for $4. Take home a hatchet for Washington's birthday. What city and state? I meant. Tacoma, Washington. Correct, Mr. Camp, and that's another four dollars. <laughs> Holy suffering cat! How did information, please, ever pass you up? I wonder. <laughs> now there's mystery in the air. Five dollars to the one who can guess from the numerous clues I'll give you what I am. And listen carefully. Now there's nothing glamorous about me. I am as silent as the ancient Sphinx. My job is of a humanitarian nature, saving lives. But alas, my wise judgment not only goes unheeded at times by fools, but they actually beat me when I warn them of danger. Any guesses so far? No. Blank looks. Life around me revolves at a terrific pace. From east and west and north and south they come. I feel like a maypole, but with the twinkling of my eye, they stop and cuss me. What am I? A traffic cop. A traffic cop that's close. But it isn't it. It's inanimate. I speak in colors of only two words. Some folks call me a silent policeman because I say stop and go. What am I? What am I? A traffic light. A traffic light is correct, Mr. Camp. That's practically a clean sweep. By George, it is a clean sweep, isn't it, Bill? Oh, shame, shame, Mrs. Camp. Oh, that's bad. That's the biggest goose egg I've ever seen. Do I get any bonus for shutting her out? (laughs) Well, you haven't (laughs) shut her out yet. We've got another test coming up here for you. But you do lead by a score of $16 to zero. <clears throat> now for your last test, Mr. and Mrs. Camp, we want to see if a woman can really out-talk a man when we limit your vocabulary. I'm going to put some questions to the two of you. You can only answer them with words beginning with the letter B. A, B, the second letter of the alphabet. Five questions in all. Two letter, uh, two dollars, rather, to the first one to come up with an answer each time. Remember, though, you must answer with only one word each time, and that word must start with the letter B. I'm going to ask you five questions. There'll be two dollars riding on each one of the questions. Now, here is the first one. What was the first thing you said to each other the first time you met? Starts with a B now. Must have a B. B, B, B. Oh, baby. That's very good. (laughs) And what did you say, Mrs. Camp? Baloney. Baloney. (laughs) Oh, no. 
a man had a conquest in mind, he had to go after that girl. She wasn't giving in easily. All right, here's your second one. What do you talk about mostly now? Babies. Babies. Uh, uh, have you got any ideas on the... Tra- what do you talk Bed about? Bed bug. Bed bug. <laughs> Boy, that's really coming down far on the scale of humanity, from a baby to a bed bug. Well, what do you know? <laughs> here's your third one. Uh, what do you think of married life? Oh. B. Uh, no, starts with a B. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's better. Mr. Camp? Bonk. Bonk. <laughs> a little late, but good. Now, here's your fourth one. A favorite breakfast food would be what? Starts with a B now. Remember, B. Favorite breakfast food starts with a B. Got to be a B. Must be a B. Can't be anything. Bean. Else. Bean? Okay. Borscht? Bean and borscht? <laughs> Well, I guess we'll have to accept those, although it's very odd to sit down to a plate of borscht, particularly if it's cold early in the morning. Here's your next one. Where is a good place to be alone? The Beat. bathtub. Bathtub, boy, are you right. Absolutely right, Mr. Camp, and that gets you two more dollars. And now I'm going to ask our good friend here, Mr. Jack Berry, to step up here and read the total additions on the board over there and tell us what the final is in the Camp family. Well, I'm afraid, Tiny, that Mrs. Camp is going to have to camp out tonight because she wound up with $5 and her husband wound up with 21 So again, gentlemen, who's the better half of the Camp family? Ah, <laughs> uh, congratulations, Mr. Camp. Along with the family honors, may we present you with a grand prize to remind you for the rest of your life that you are indeed the better half of your family. This lovely Bulova, 17 jewel gift of a lifetime, a flight commander. Hope Thank you enjoy wearing it. Very well, sir. And uh, Mrs. Camp, you were an awfully good sport. You tried awfully hard, but still, there is only one fate in store for those who lose on the better half. And that is to be relegated to our second Raiders row, where you may sit quietly and watch to the best of folk. But just to make a second Raider feel good, let's give her a little applause, shall we, huh? That's fine. That makes you feel better, I know. And now, uh, is couple number three on tap, Jack? That they are, a courageous couple rushing in where others fear to tread. Yes. <laughs> Meet Mr. and Mrs. Pizer, who get, get this, Tiny, who yep. live between Martinsville and Liberty Corners, New Jersey. Can't make up their minds, huh? <laughs> well, that's fine. Glad to have you here, Mr. and Mrs. Pizer. Step right on that trap door there in front of the microphone. Make yourselves at home. How are you feeling, Mrs. Pizer? Oh, fine. And how long have you been married to Mrs. Pizer, Mr. Pizer? Oh, 30 years. 30 years, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you... Uh, you've been married the same length of time, I presume? Yes, indeed. 30 years. How many months? Do you remember that? When was your... What's the date of your anniversary? Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Well, I'm so happy that you're here so close to your anniversary. That will be your 30th or 31st? 30th. Be your 30th anniversary. What does that mean in the, in ways of uh, of anniversary? What does that get you? China or what? Or I, uh, Pearl? Pearl. Pearls, is that right? I'm not sure about that. Well, there's no money on that answer, no. so nobody's going to worry about it. <laughs> Mr. Pizer, you know, they say when a woman goes up in the air, she usually lands on her husband. So watch out here tonight, will okay. you? Okay. Now let's open our bag of tricks and see what happens. Here's a question right on top. And it's marked $2. When daylight saving time goes into effect, do we turn our clocks upside down, inside out, forward, or backwards? Backwards. What? Forward. Forward is correct. A good second guess, Mr. Pizer. <laughs> turn the forward one hour is correct, and we'll be doing that April the 28th, I believe, or somewhere along about that time. Now for $3, I want you to name all the foods you can think of in... Oh, I'll give you an unlimited length of time here. All the foods you can think of that are eaten from the inside out. Now, like a pumpkin or a grapefruit. And I'm going to let you alternate this time, giving first you, Mrs. Pizer, then Mr. Pizer, then Mrs. Pizer. And the first one who runs out of things that you can eat from the inside out loses. Go right ahead, Mrs. Pizer. Orange. Correct. Uh, grapefruit. That is correct. Watermelon. Watermelon. Very good. Egg. Egg. Yes, yes, indeed. Only way. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe is also good. Uh, Uh, Mrs. Pizer. Cantaloupe. Eggplant. Eggplant, yes. You couldn't eat it from the outside in. It has to be cut open. Now, Mrs. Pizer, Banana? come on. Banana? Banana? Right. Yes, you have to eat it from the in. Have to take the skin off it. Mr. Pizer? Potato. Potato? I'm going to question that. I'm going to question potato. Go right ahead now. Give me another if you can, but I'm going to question potato. And I'm going to count to ten. If you don't come up with ten, she wins on you. One. Give me a cue. Two. Pineapple. Three. What? Pineapple. pineapple. She said pineapple. She said pineapple, but it's still your turn. Is she helping you? A little bit. She wants you to be the better half? Well, let's all go home. What's the sense of this whole thing here? Now, now, come on. Get in and fight. One, two, three. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. That's all right. I'll accept that. I don't remember any of us saying that. Go right ahead now. I said that in the thing at the beginning. Pineapple. Go ahead. Pineapple, you said it. That's all right now, Mr. Pizer. One. Squash. Very good. You see, you can go right on once you get started. Come on, Mrs. Pizer. One, 
two, three, four. She's slipping. Five, uh-huh. six. She's falling. Seven, eight, nine. She's practically flat. Nine and a half. Nine and three quarters. Nine and seven eighths. Two nine more. and fifteen. Cucumber. Cucumber. Well, all right. Go right ahead. Come on, Mr. Pizer. One, uh, two, three. A gherkin. Gherkin. Oh, no. Now, I, I always eat my gherkins straightforward. I don't sneak up on them and bore in at them. I eat them right bang like that. that. Come on, give us another one here. Got to do better than gherkin. One, two, a three, four, five. Uh, Frankfurter. Frankfurter. No, 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 no. Ta- that's all right. You can't. You got to take the skin off of a Frankfurter if it's cellophane. I'll accept that. Okay. Come on, Mrs. Pfizer. A, a, a pomegranate. A what? Pomegranate. Pomegranate is very good. Now let's not neglect the citrus fruits. We've a lot we have that's mentioned. Right. Go right ahead. What do you put in a in a, What do you put in a Bacardi? Guava. Guava. That's all right. What do you put in a Bacardi? A little round thing, sometimes green with a touch Cherry. of yellow. Cherry. No. Olive. You're thinking of Manhattan. I'm surprised. Olive. Plain to see you've never been a bartender. Olive. You have to eat to get at the seed. How are you going to eat the seed first and then come outside? What are you, a worm? A That's a fine beans. thing. Huh? A can of beans. Can of... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that can. When a woman can get down to taking the can and eating it from the inside out, I quit. Chug her up with the money over there. That's three, That's two dollars I'm glad to see you get. <laughs> and now... <laughs> Now for three dollars, I want. Oh no! Now that's, that's for, the, oh she got three dollars that time. Now we're going on to four dollars and four parts. The answers in each case must start with the word Jack, like Jack of all trades, Jack in the pulpit, and so on. Here we go. These are definitions. You tell me what they are. It's got to have a Jack in it. A graceful diver can do what? Jackknife. Very good, sir. A tortoise once beat a what in a race? A hare. No, it's got to have a Jack in it. Jack rabbit. That is correct. Ah, a very lucky day here. Now, on a lucky day, you might hit what kind of a pot? Jackpot. That is correct. Children get a big kick out of a what? Got to have a jack in it. Jack. Jack? Jack. Jacks would be all right. Jacks is okay. I'll accept that. And uh, the uh, $3 uh, goes to to you, I believe, sir, and $1 to Mrs. Pizer. Well, Mrs. Pizer, we're losing ground here a little bit, but here's one for $5. This is your last one, and you really got to think about this. It's a compound word that we're looking for. Two words compounded and used as one. Let's see who can figure out what it is. The second part of the word is practically made of the same material as the first. The first has the same name as a rabbit. The whole word word is actually used to keep the first word in order. What is the word? Now, if I haven't confused you, I certainly haven't done a good job. You didn't confuse me. I'll take. I'll go right through it again. The second part of the word is practically made of the same material as the first. The first part of the word has the same name as a rabbit, only it's not a rabbit, it's the other name for it. The whole word is actually used to keep the first word in order. All right, now, I'll I'll help. Hair? Hair is the first part. Now, what's the rest part? The last part. Hairbrush? Hairbrush is correct, Mr. Pizer. Nice going. That gets you five more dollars in our congratulations. Let's take a look at that mental department. Well, it's a little closer this time. <laughs> Mr. Pizer leads only by a score of eight to six with the final round coming up. And Mrs. Pizer, I want you to get in here now and do your best because we want to get at least one man in that second Raiders row tonight, see? Right. So for this last <laughs> test, and before we go on with it, I'd like to speak, Mr. Pizer, to your wife alone, if I may. Oh, yeah. So take him away, Mr. Barry. Oh. And while he's out there, slip a raincoat and a hat on the man. You can never tell when it's going to rain these days. In fact... You can never tell from now when it's going to come through the top of the theater, the way it's raining outside. And now, Mrs. Pfizer, he's away. We want to see how helpful a wife can really be. After 30 years, you've probably learned of a number of ways to help your husband. But none, I am sure, which will satisfy you so much as this way that you're going to help him tonight. When your husband comes back here, I'm going to read a little poem. Now and then I'll pause and ask your husband to fill in the missing words. To help him do that, Mrs. Pizer, we'll let you stand directly in back of him. Now, you can't talk to him. Can't talk, understand? But by insinuations only, you're to help him when you think he's stuck. Your insinuations will be on a table there right next to you. Four in all, corresponding to the four words that he's got to fill in. From left to right on that table, I think you'll notice a cup of flour, a frying pan, a pitcher of water, and a nice, fresh, raw egg. Now, remember, if he doesn't come right out with the answer, you toss him a gentle little hint by bouncing any one of those things there off his noggin, see? Each one is associated with one of the missing words. 
and uh, be sure that you get the right one that's associated. See, otherwise the hint's no good. If he answers right away, your help will not be needed. But if he's stuck, you help him out. If he gets three out of four without your help, the $10 goes to him. If he needs your help, the money goes to you, and you will be the better half of the Pizer family. That's how important it is to you. Now, you go right over there and stand behind that chair, and we'll bring Mr. Pizer right back onto our stage here. Let's get him back now, shall we, Ed? Here he comes. This fella doesn't know what he's in for. <laughs> he's got a hunch, though. Right up to the microphone, Mr. Pizer. Come on. Hey. Oh, that's all right there. Uh, 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 well, 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 Mr. Pizer. What's the big idea of all the rubber goods? Uh, why don't you tell me? Oh, well, <laughs> well, if you like it, you can wear it. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like you to sit down and make yourself comfortable there. Uh, you're, you're making yourself comfortable? Oh, yes. I'm so happy to hear that. I want you to be comfortable above all other things. Now, I'm going to be poetical here tonight. I'm going to read you a lovely bit of poetry, Mr. Pizer. Uh-huh. And I'd simply like you to supply the missing words. You're good at limericks. Oh, very good. Oh, you'll have no trouble at all. Remember, it's a poem, so the words have got to rhyme limerick style. Your wife is standing in back of you. She can't talk to you, but she'll help you all she can with some gentle hints. Remember, she can't talk to you, but she, she'll give you the idea, I'm sure, because she promised us that she would help you all through this test with hints if you get stumped. Well, that's well. Okay, now, here we go. <laughs> Listen carefully. Now, here's the poem. Tis spring, and each passing hour brings out a new... A new... Uh, uh, brings out a new... Flower. <laughs> yeah, well, a little late. A little late. A little late. Now, here, that uh, you, you wouldn't have needed that hint, but... Uh, she gave it to you at the same time that you got it, so you got it. <laughs> All right, now let's go on with this next little bit of poetry. <laughs> oh, Mr. Pizer, she'll help you. Don't worry, she'll help you if you need it. Okay. The roses, the lilacs, and trees will soon be joined by the little... Pan, 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 pansies. Pansies, that's right. I'm so sorry you had to have those hints, though, Mr. Pizer. That was unfortunate. <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> Because, you see, she had to help you. But see if you can get this one without any help now. The beautiful trees that cover the lane make it a shelter when it starts to... Rain! <laughs> Mrs. Kaiser. Mrs. Kaiser, he did not need that hint. He was right on the feet. And it's no bad. That's a fine thing. We apologize for Mrs. Kaiser. Mrs. Pizer, I tell you what you've got to do. Take that water right back. Take it back. Take the water back, Mrs. Pizer. That doesn't count, see? Now let's go on to this last one, and I'm sure you won't need any help with this, Mr. Pizer. Here we go. The farmers are busy with holes, plows, and rakes. The hen house is chock full of chickens and... Oh, eggs, eggs are so Oh, eggs is right. Well, we ain't got the hint that time. Oh, this poor boy is really... to his score and here's Jack Berry to give us the final score. Well, Ten more dollars Friday. to Mrs. Pizer's score. All right, here's the final. Mr. Pizer wound up with eight dollars. Mrs. Pizer has 26. So ladies, who's the better half of the Pizer family? <laughs> Congratulations, Mrs. Pizer. You walked off with the honors entitling you to an extra special grand prize for the better half of your family. May we present you with this beautiful world, famous 17 jewel. Full of a goddess of time. I earned it. You earned it, and she got it. You're right. Well, as you look at the results of tonight, we find husbands and wives to round up in our second readers' row, but there are two wives and only one husband, so tonight the gentlemen are the better halves of the family. <laughs> Join us again next week at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, for another stormy session of the better half. Until then, this is your old friend Tiny Ruffner bidding you good night, all. Better Half is a Jack Byrne production and originates from the Mutual Playhouse in New York. Jack Barry speaking, and this is the Mutual Broadcasting System.